Hey guys, it's Carl. So I just got back from a pretty big trip. I actually just broke 100,000 miles uh, traveling this year. It's still a couple months left till the end. So I thought I would do some of the best uh, travel tech. I know that you guys uh, love these series and I actually just upgraded my luggage, which you see off to the side. This thing has been super dope. So obviously uh, I've worked with DB Journey for many, many years and this is their new luggage line. It's called uh, the Ramberk. So one of the big reasons why I was super stoked to test these out, obviously the colorway, uh, it's an orange. That's uh, one of the biggest reasons why. I think the aesthetic of this uh, luggage is probably one of the best on the market and uh, traveling with them, even through the cobblestones of uh, Greece, through Europe, they've held up perfectly fine. They're kind of my new go-to, both for a carry-on as well as check luggage. So they have two different variants. They've got the, uh, the Ramberk, which is in this uh, polyester style case. It comes in a bunch of different colors, as well as the Pro models that have the aluminum strip, a bit more premium. Um, it's kind of your choice. There's obviously a bit of a price difference between them. I personally like the regular zippers. I find that you can kind of store a bit more stuff and still kind of sneak in to the luggage, whereas the Aluminum Pro models, you have to kind of clamp them together. Maybe that's a bit more secure. They obviously have all the features you need for luggage, like uh, the little TSA lock to keep your stuff secure. The handle is nice and sturdy. There's no weird wiggles or wobble, and you can see that I've got my little uh, Super Elite tag, and um, as mentioned, this one has a 34 liters as the carry-on. Going on to the inside, what I actually really love, both sides have these uh, nice little zippers here to keep all your stuff secure. I've found in a previous luggage and I've reviewed a lot in my day, some just have little straps that keep whatever you have inside secure. But if you don't have clothes, if you're rocking a lot of tech, if you're bringing a lot of small things, which I tend to do, they kind of bounce around in your luggage. So having these two little flaps is pretty clutch in my opinion. And um, I would say the only criticism of this light, awesome orange color for the check luggage, they do get dinged up. Obviously airline luggage staff aren't gonna be super careful Careful, they toss around your luggage, but uh, even through the trials and tribulations of being tossed around, uh, they have held that perfectly fine with some beauty marks. And I think that adds to the allure and kind of to the story of your luggage. You don't wanna just keep it in pristine condition. So overall, 10 out of 10 would recommend them. I will leave, of course, links down below. And uh, if you do grab one, let me know which color you get. Um, you know my bias. Gotta get an orange. So main luggage out of the way, I usually still carry some sort of cross sling, especially in Europe, uh, you're wearing shorts in the summertime, you still have a lot of stuff uh, in your pockets to kind of keep stuff safe. And I do have this entire tale of uh, losing my passport when I got to Athens. If you're following around on stories, you'll know that it was an entire dilemma. Short story, someone found it in the airport. I still flew to Mykonos. It was turned into the lost and found and I picked it up about 10 days later and I was reunited. I should have put it in this guy, but it was just strangely in my pocket. But anyways, this is the new Grams 28 uh, carry-on sling, or I guess cross body sling. I love these. These are really great for just storing your essentials like your smartphone, like your passport. Uh, I've got my shades in here. I know a lot of people ask questions. I'll get to these at the end as some extra little essentials, but keeping them close by, to your body, you obviously don't wanna have things floating around in your pocket. It's made out of leather, so it holds up perfectly. I've had a lot of their slings before, and this one's just a bit more rectangular, a bit boxier compared to this. I believe this is the 158 sling, so they've got a couple different options in different colorways as well, but this is the newest one that I've tested. I love this thing, and uh, for little day packs, I think these are kind of essential and perfect. Smartphone of choice. So this was my trip to test out the brand new iPhone 15 Pro Max. This actually just came in like a day before I left my trip. So use this as my daily there. So this one, obviously it's um, in the natural titanium. You honestly don't really notice the weight difference uh, from the titanium, maybe slightly compared to the stainless steel. I will say that it still picks up uh, fingerprints and I tested out quite a few cases while I was there. So I used Apple's replacement for uh, their leather line since they're moving to carbon neutrality. So this is their fine woven case. I won't say this is one of the worst products that Apple has made, but it's um, it's up there. And even though it's not leather, it still commands a high price of 60 bucks US or 79 Canadian. And it doesn't have that premium feel that leather has. It's almost like a micro fiber suede finish. But then on the sides, it almost has like this rubber case so you don't get that nice soft feel around. It doesn't really patina well, but it still scratches quite easily and you can actually see the markings that I got from my trip. I just added a couple with my fingernail and those 
aren't going anywhere. So it's not the best design case. I really miss uh, the leather cases that Apple had. Um, I get what they're doing with the whole carbon neutrality footprint thing, but um, I would have liked to see probably a more premium case, maybe like a vegan leather would be uh, my suggestion. The one that I actually really liked was this one from Spec. So they come in a couple different options. You can go with the smooth one, or if you are notorious for uh, dropping your phone, they have a grip case as well. But checking on the insides, they have a lot of protection in case you drop your phone, especially on those cobblestone streets. Um, you don't want to break your brand new like $1,500 Pro Max. So just keeping your phone protected, like I said, this is nice and simple. It's super clean and minimal. I won't drone about the tech uh, too much, but uh, for the price, this is actually cheaper than the fine woven one. It gives extra protection and doesn't scratch and scuff as easily. So definitely this is the one that I would recommend. A lot of people ask about the issues for the 15 Pro Max. So I've seen them overheating phones. While I was on my trip, I honestly didn't notice too much or too many issues. I was mainly using stock camera app, but to take all the photos, all the video footage. And the issue kind of revolves around third party apps according to Apple, that is affecting the battery, making the phone extra hot. Apple is actually working on their own software update with those developers to kind of remedy that issue, but I know that there's been a ton of flack around the 15 Pros. Like I said, my unit specifically, haven't noticed uh, too many issues, but as I continue to use the phone, I'll keep you guys updated. Since the 15s, 15 Pros are now USB-C, so I just picked up a couple uh, USB-C cables just to keep all my devices juiced up. So these are the ones I typically go to from Nomad. They're braided. Um, I know that Apple includes ones out of the box. They're still too tiny, they're too short. I like to have longer cables since you never know uh, where you'll be juicing up. And I will successfully say all of the tech uh, on my trip was with, um, one cable type, so that's kind of dope now. And rounding off the Apple game since everything was just uh, released before I went. So I did test out the Apple Watch Ultra 2. I wore it specifically uh, when I had beach days when I was jumping into water, which was uh, quite a bit. This is honestly the same as uh, the Gen 1 Ultra. So if you already own that, I think it's obviously just worth the pass. I was rocking my gold speedy for a lot of it. And you can probably see this dirty tan line that I did pick up uh, while I was there. So like I said, I always had a watch on me and just to be in salt water, didn't want to wreck the nice watch. So this is when the ultra two is on the wrist. I will say the 3000 nits for the display. So it's the brightest display that Apple makes in direct sunlight. It was super easy to see, but I wouldn't say there's enough features to justify upgrading to this if you've already got Gen 1, and if you don't have Gen 1, you could probably pick it up on a bit of a steal, a bit of a bargain, instead of hunting around uh, for the new Gen 2. I do like this uh, little strap. It's like orange, blue, and like a bit of beige. And I guess the next thing that Apple made was the new AirPods, or I guess new. So these are technically uh, AirPods Gen 2, the pros. The only thing that has changed is now that USB-C cable. So they've moved away uh, from Lightning. So just a nice, half upgrade. Once again, all the items that you saw charging by USB-C. So it's nice that I didn't have to bring a lightning cable to charge any of my tech. So these two definitely worth the pass if you already own the previous gen, but if you haven't, I guess these are worth it. The ultra, nah. Switching to my computer. So I brought my 15 inch MacBook Air just because of its uh, lightweight and thinness. So I think a lot of you know, I've got the 16 inch MacBook Pro, but because I wasn't churning out too much content, this was more of a, a personal trip. I still did a little bit of work, but uh, I didn't need to edit any of my 4K footage. I just took some social stuff, mostly shot with like my iPhone. I could do that uh, all with the MacBook Air. I think the form factor, I think the lightweightness of it is just super attractive. And if you are just operating via USB-C, I didn't really need to pop out my SD card from my camera since I actually didn't use it, which is actually one of my biggest I wouldn't say regrets. I did take my Sony with me. Like I said, I shot most of the stuff on the 15 Pro Max. Maybe I took like one to two photos. I think smartphone photography has just gotten so much better. And since you can shoot on the 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max is in Apple Pro Res Raw, it's gradable footage and it looks a bit more cinematic. The need for a legit camera, obviously for professional work, um, they don't really compete, but for 90% of the stuff that I think people take, an iPhone is honestly probably the way to go. Like class leading video, I'm working on my like revisited one month full review of this device, but um, I find the need to use 
my actual camera less and less, which is sad because I've always been an advocate of shooting, uh, you know, high quality stuff, but sometimes some of the photos, even some of the video that I take is comparable between a thing that you can stick in your pocket that can, um, you know, access everything you need, like social media, the internet. You live off your phone and having this big hunking thing, which just takes up space. Um, I guess that's a debate for another video. And last but not least, the final little accessories that were floating around. So I do always travel with my Lexar SSD. Once again, I didn't really need to take as much footage as I needed, but the nice thing, since this is USB-C and since the iPhones now take USB-C, you can actually store footage straight from your iPhone to an SSD, especially if you're recording in that ProRes RAW, if you just wanna keep that footage off your iPhone, it's just that one simple cable, which I think is super dope. I had this little ND filter, which I didn't use because I didn't use my Sony, but that lives in my bag. And for some of these cinematic shots and to take uh, photos of Kat and I when we didn't bring a videographer with us on the trip. So I just had this little InstaFlow 360. You can see the little tripod leg. So just sticking this on a table. So this is great for taking little couple photos. I'll kind of show some of the ones that we got uh, while we were there. It's once again, not too big to carry around with. And if you're someone that likes to vlog, create that cinematic footage and it kind of flips between both uh, portrait and landscape with the click of a button. Second last, I mentioned I threw AirTags into uh, all of my luggage. So not just the carry-on ones, but the large check-in ones, just making sure that the luggage actually gets to its final destination. I think AirTags are pretty clutch. And if you are a uh, team Apple, team iOS, you can see all the Apple stuff that I brought uh, on this trip. This just makes total sense. And uh, I mentioned that I would include my shades. I got a lot of questions around these actually. A lot of people on Instagram asking what they are. So these are uh, Persols. They are in this like tortoise this green color, which I think is super dope and really unique. Definitely uh, something uh, to kind of carry around in the summer, especially uh, with a lot of sun. So that has been my tech carry-on travel EDC luggage. I really just wanted to showcase uh, this dope orange uh, luggage, which I think a lot of you were asking about. So highly recommended. I will leave links for everything uh, listed down below. If there's anything vital, it's uh, do not lose your passport. That's probably the biggest takeaway. And for cracking like 100,000 miles, if you are someone that travels a lot, just stay uh, local with one airline. So I'm uh, Air Canada Star Alliance. Um, you just get a lot of the extra perks. I actually got upgraded on a lot of my flights uh, just for being a higher status. So that's always dope. So hopefully you enjoyed uh, this episode. Hopefully you got some useful tips. If you've got any other suggestions, uh, some glaring weaknesses in my tech travel game, let me know down below and I'll catch the rest of you in one of my next episodes. Peace.